You're listening to Love Mary Jane, a big talk podcast helping relationships thrive in the modern cannabis culture. Engage by submitting your story and cannabis infused relationship questions at lovemaryjane.net. Each episode of Love Mary Jane will feature a letter seeking advice or insight into a relationship affected by cannabis. Romantic, familial, professional, personal, nothing is off limits. Wherever you're struggling, I will hand select a friend, colleague, or expert that feels appropriate to join me in the studio to help me empower you to make the best decision. This is Love Mary Jane. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our very first live taping of the Love Mary Jane podcast. Um, I've started this back in October and have about five episodes under my belt. So if you have already by chance listened to an episode of Love Mary Jane, then you are familiar with my co-host for the evening, Aaron Beata. Um, Aaron, I'll let you introduce yourself real quick. And then, you know, but first I want to say one thing. You know, we were talking about the social constructs of relationships earlier and about how you can't, you know, find um, pictures of all the different ways that we connect in life and in the bedroom. And so I just want to preface this by saying, regardless of your relationship construct, we we just hope that you get out of this evening that we want you to be okay with who you are and what you want. And so we're talking about sexual adventure this evening. We're talking about finding what feels good, being willing to experiment with what that is. And um, I have a perspective coming from someone who is bisexual. I spent a portion of my life dating men and women. I currently only have been dating men just because I tend to have better relationships with men than women. But, you know, one of the things while I was exploring my sexuality, you know, the coming out of the closet, there was this fear and shame around being who I was and and what people might think of me. And it was interesting whenever I was spending a lot of my adult life hiding in the closet with cannabis. And so for me to come out of the cannabis closet, I felt a lot of those the same fears and anxieties about being judged for who I was and what I wanted and what made me feel good. So I use coming out of the closet a lot on Casually Baked the Podcast and on Love Mary Jane because I think it's really important that we acknowledge that, you know, we are we're all different. We're all unique. We all want what we want and it's, and it's okay. And, um, and so I want this to be a platform where everyone feels comfortable to ask questions and to just be who they are. So Erin is a beautiful example of that. She's a dear friend of mine. We work together in the matchmaking space. And so Erin, I want you to introduce yourself and kind of kick the talk off. Yeah, thank you. Welcome everyone. It's great to be here. Uh, My name is Erin Biata. I I run a boutique matchmaking agency uh, based in the San Francisco Bay Area, Los Angeles, and New York City. Um, And I've spent the past decade really immersing myself in male-female dynamics, relationship dynamics, and the art and craft of the female orgasm. Um, So Joanna and I, for any of you who have listened to the podcast, we've gotten uh, gotten pretty raw and real uh, in a lot of our talks. Um, And what was really interesting for us in starting to do some of the research about this evening, um, we were seeing some crazy statistics around um, over 50% of women claiming in longer term relationships to already experience boredom or being on the verge of boredom in the bedroom. And I was telling Joe, I was like, I actually think it's higher than that because Uh, in a in a bigger picture scheme of things 
women are taught so much to lie about our pleasure and, and what we want. And so it's really beautiful to see how cannabis can start to come into this space and allow us to have a deeper connection with not only ourselves, but our, our partners. Um, and so for me, it's been this practice of learning how to surrender more and more to my deeper desires and then being able to connect with my partner um, from that place just adds so much um, depth and, and nutrients to, to what we continue to build together. You know, so let's all be clear. Both sexes want variety novelty and adventure and the social constructs say that that's what men want that's not what women want women want women want to cuddle and and you know and tell you secrets and talk about your feelings and we also like to have amazing orgasms so cannabis is a beautiful catalyst for providing variety and novelty and adventure to the bedroom so we're going to dive in to what some of those things are. Um, you know, there's a way to be creative and highly responsible in the bedroom. And, you know, one of the things like when Tali was talking earlier about, you know, microdosing to get yourself there and to get yourself kind of going, microdosing is fucking crucial to the experience because if you overdose on cannabis, I mean, I've, I've had to tap out of sex before. I've had a couple of drinks. I smoked a little too much weed. And then I'm like, you know what? Nothing's going to happen. I'm really sorry. I mean, you can keep going. But like at some point, we're going to have to stop. So that's not, that's not fun. So microdose, you know, a little goes a long way. And so that would be, you know, my first tip, I guess, for being creative and highly responsible in the bedroom. Definitely. <laughs> I, I have numerous memories now coming back <laughs> of just <laughs> being in my early 20s and not paying attention to a lot of that stuff. Um, and just finding myself in situations where not only was I not comfortable, but I actually didn't have any of the communication skills either to be able to have an honest conversation um, because there's so much stigma and shame that comes around with cannabis use. Um, one of the things being that um, as a matchmaker, you know, a lot of people want to know about your alcohol consumption. Are you a social drinker? Are you not a drinker? But the conversation around cannabis really rarely comes into the space. And it wasn't until I actually started working with some uh, ganjapreneurs um, that I really got to be able to start learning about how to talk about these things as well. Yeah. And, you know, I think a good thing to bring up, too, is a lot of people that may be in long-term relationships. So you're already really comfortable with your partner, but maybe neither you or your partner are comfortable with cannabis. And so, you know, you already know each other and it's like, okay, how do you have the, bring up that conversation of, I want to experiment with this thing. You know, I mean, I say you go to the dispensary, you get yourself a little bottle of lube and you bring it home and you're like, I have something fun for us to play with tonight. You know, and you just kind of like introduce it, just put it out there. Like, don't be afraid to ask for what you want. And, you know, that I think for someone who is with a new partner and you don't know each other yet, I would definitely say, you know, have sex with this person before you start introducing cannabis into the mix. Like, get comfortable with your partner before you start layering things into it. So, We've got like, let's, we've got the intimacy piece. And then, you know, now let's microdose some cannabis. Now let's maybe take some mushrooms. I mean, whatever. That's a, that's a whole other episode. <laughs> that's a whole other episode. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I was really appreciating what Talia was saying um, about that piece as well, because um, 
just how a lot of people sometimes want to use a few drinks to kind of relax and not feel as as tight. I think it is really, really important when you're dating someone new to be able to have the experience with them firsthand um, of learning how to communicate your desires, um, especially in the culture that we live in now, being able to talk about your boundaries and you know your soft boundaries and your hard boundaries is is imperative um, in yeah, the so climate that we live. Dive in. into that pregame conversation a little bit more because you know I'm you the hard boundary soft boundary thing like <laughs> y- I would be like mm, what does that mean? So tell us tell us what those are. Yeah, um, well it's interesting. My my partner and I were were just kind of talking about this uh, the other day, especially when you're bringing cannabis into the space. Um, and you'll all see um, in your little gift bags. There's this really uh, cool little sex talk about safety and identity and feelings and and boundaries and whatnot. Um, and you know, I think specifically. One of the areas that that tends to be kind of gray with some of this stuff is when you are initially starting to see someone, um, maybe you don't actually know if you're on a date. I know I've been on (laughs) dates before and I wasn't actually sure. I was like, am I on a date? Are we friends? Like, what's exactly happening here? And I personally think in terms of this conversation, my my partner calls it the ganja goggles where you know if you're hanging out with a friend and you're like hey do you want to smoke a little bud with me um but you're also like but i'm also kind of attracted to you and once we have that that cannabis in our system you know when do you have those type of consent conversations Um, And for me, that really comes back to the foundation of talking about boundaries is is being in touch with them for yourself. Um, So I really think it's imperative when you're if you're curious about someone or you do know that, you know, hey, I, I really might enjoy making out with this person tonight, that you start the conversation um, before you're actually finding yourself intoxicated um, because we don't always make the same choices. And I think the important part is knowing that the next day when you wake up, you feel really good about what happened. Yeah, so... I'm dating. I, I and you know I go on first dates, second dates with people, and I have learned to I don't I don't ask people if they want to smoke with me anymore because inevitably everyone always claims because I try to have this pregame conversation and I ask how comfortable they are with cannabis, how much they use, and of course I'm a entrepreneur, so I don't know if they're trying to impress me, but they're like, oh yeah, totally, I smoke. And so I've had a couple of drinks with this person and then we smoke and then I'm trapped with them for like three hours <laughs> because they're crossfaded and they lied to me. And I'm like, great, now what am I supposed to do with this person? Like, I don't want to even be around them anymore. So, so what have you done in those situations? Well, <laughs> I gave, I tried to feed them some water and a little bit more food and, um, get them a car to get wherever they need to go. But, you know, it's one of those things where it's, I think it is my responsibility to have the conversation, but it's also the other person's responsibility to be transparent. And so, you know, for me as, as a regular cannabis user now, I just keep them separate. I do not drink and I do not smoke with someone at this, you know, collectively, so I try to keep those two things separate. So if I'm on a date with you, let's have a couple of drinks. Basta. No more. That's all. That's all we're going to do. Or uh, let's drink water. Let's have some, you know, sparkling water or something and let's consume cannabis. But I try to keep them in their own lanes when I'm with people that I'm, I'm not really familiar or comfortable with in that regard. Yeah, that that definitely <laughs> seems like the smart route to take. Yeah. I know I've found myself in pretty sticky situations about that. Um, and, you know, I think that the more and more that we're moving into a model of affirmative consent being really the standard in our culture, it's just y- you can't get around this conversation anymore. And, you know, 
fortunately, unfortunately for women, we tend to need to manage our experiences a little bit more. I mean, it's a very different uh, situation, but, you know, as women, we do have a vigilance center that is is larger than a man. So we're, we're constantly sort of on the lookout for what potentially could be going wrong. Um, yeah. So that connection with your own boundaries, like you seem to have found in this particular <laughs> situation, this little yes. sticky situation yes. seems to be working well. So let's talk a little bit about um, the intentional use of, of using cannabis to check in versus, you know, checking out, numbing out in a, in a, you know, a sexual experience? Yeah. Um. Well, if you, I mean, so we've talked about microdosing a little bit mm -hmm. and um, to, you know, to find your sweet spot or whatever. So what do you, like, how do you consider from, you know, your perspective as a, a sex expert, I will call you compared to me. Um, so if you're trying to, um, to check in with someone and be like, okay, like I, you know, I want to introduce sex and, in, or I want to introduce cannabis into our sexual experience or whatever, like how do you kind of broach that conversation and find out exactly like, I mean, I, I, I guess I kind of already have the answer that I want in my own head. <laughs> So what happens when you're a gondrepreneur and a relationship writer? You just have all the answers. But no. Well, you know, I mean, it, I think it's like we said, if this is someone that you've already been intimate with and you're having that experience, like part of it is like you got to just fucking own your desires. Like I, I think that most people find that regardless of the dynamic that you're in, owning your desires is hot. It's sexy, it's fun, it turns your partner on, whoever you are with. You know, that being said, I feel like extremely California saying this right now, but I think that having some intention around it is a really nice thing. Yeah. You know, my friends in New York would be like, oh my God, the intention setting Californian in you is coming out. <laughs> well, but I, I guess that's what I was thinking about too, is because we get hyper aware. If we take too much, we're hyper aware of, of who we are and how we're showing up and, you know, like how you're taking your clothes off and like, you know, if you're saying the right things or am I doing the right thing? And, and I feel like when you have consumed too much cannabis, that part of you is on overdrive. Yeah, definitely. I think as women, we're already concerned, like, do we look right? You know, did I shave the right way? Does he think my thighs look big? You know, does my hair look okay? Does my makeup look okay? Is there makeup on my face? It's There's a constant uh, running system in our minds um, of, do we look right? Are we doing it right? Does he like me? Is he into me? And so really mindfully finding that sweet spot for you, I think can actually calm some of those voices so that you actually can open up and have the type of experience that is, you know, explosive and well, mind blowing. Yeah, Cause you're in your connected. body all of a sudden instead of in your head anymore. Exactly. But it is, it's like this really fine line where, you know, you're like totally in your body and then all of a sudden that edible kicks in and then you're totally in your head. So yeah. I think and that's I think just something to think about. And I think being willing to be vulnerable and honest about that too is a huge piece because I know for me, especially if I'm really into someone, I don't often want to admit that I'm like, oh shit, I'm way too stoned. So it's like trying to be cool, even though you're completely switched off and back into your head. Yeah. And so I think that in terms of communication around this kind of thing, it really comes back to being willing to be vulnerable with the person that you're with. Yeah. Because, you know, a surface relationship, you know, someone that you're looking for a hookup with, it's not as big of a deal. But if you're actually wanting to cultivate depth with someone, being willing to be vulnerable about your desires and your boundaries or what's feeling good in the moment. And especially for women, what might feel good in one moment, you know, two minutes later, we're like, nope, time to move on to something yeah. else. <laughs> well, and you know what? It's, it's so you talking about the, the consciousness of it and the, the intentionality of it, you know, when we first started the talk, we're talking about people being bored in the bedroom and so I really do think that is the biggest key to that is just like 
just saying it, like being open, being honest, being your authentic self. And, and you know, frankly, if, if you're not sure if your partner is bored with you in the bedroom, like do that gut check. Go, when you get home, go look in the mirror. And when you look at yourself, are you the same person that you were five years ago? And if you are, I guarantee you, whoever you're having sex with is bored of you. So it's very important that we are consciously evolving, that we are being curious, that we're trying new things, that we're striving for that deeper connection with our, you know, our personal relationships, with our career, with our hobbies. Like, if you don't turn yourself on when you look in the mirror, you're not turning anybody else on. So that would be my challenge for you this evening is, you know, how adventurous are you? You know, what do you want from your partner? And, and be willing to give what it is that you want to get. Definitely. Oh, I love it. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I was looking at this, this article the other day and they were talking about like, you know, one of those typical like the five different types of blah, 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 you know, but they were I actually like this one. Yeah. Clickbait. Exactly. Um, and they were talking about the different um, types of sex within a partnership, you know, so you kind of have that like married sex, the comfortable sex where you're like, we're going to do this for a few minutes. And then, you know, maybe he's going to do that or she's going to do this. And you, you kind of know what the flow is going to be. You kind of know how long the whole experience <laughs> yeah. is going to take, <laughs> you know? And to me, I think that with a lot of the people that I work with, that's the spot where that boredom ends up kicking in, you know? And I, I was looking at some of the other phases, you know, so you have more of that romantic phase in the beginning where, you know, you're you're making sure you have the right cologne or perfume on and maybe there's candles lit and you know you're making sure that the sheets are extra clean and you know kind of everything is really set um and I think that what people are craving is more of that like animalistic take me and still wanting to have that variety or exploring with certain kinks and and having these different things and cannabis in small doses can so much fuel these other aspects of you um, where you know you can take something that feels um, comfortable and nourishing and pleasurable with someone that you know really deeply and then be able to have that start coming in at such an exponential level. And I think that that is so key to the boredom that people experience in longer term relationships, which often leads to infidelity for a lot of yeah. people who aren't willing to be honest about their deeper desires. And, you know, to piggyback on that. <laughs> so... When you are introducing cannabis into the bedroom and you are, you know, you're willing to be adventurous, I'm telling you, if you have not used cannabis infused lube, it is a must and a plus because I'm telling you, it will not only amplify your orgasm, which will surprise you and your partner. I mean, you're like, this is, we're so good at this. <laughs> and, but, Women, you can have multiple orgasms. I mean, it's, it, you should always lube up anyway. It's just way more fun that way. It's way more easier, especially as women get older. If you're not using Viva La V, you know, you can, you can tear things. It, you know, th things start getting thin, sucks, getting old. But always use the cannabis infused lube. I promise you, you will win at sex every time. I can't believe this one right here. She I, has I it yet. I so. have an admission. I, I've actually never used cannabis infused lube, but I think it's going to happen pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was my, it was my full bag. court. I got to make sure to get a gift bag tonight. <laughs> and so some other benefits of adding cannabis to your sexual ex experience. Um, I, and this is something that I want you to talk about, is that shifting gears from that singularly focused sex into a discovery and play session. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that sex can be very singularly focused where um, you're really constantly striving to reach that goal of climax. Um, and so oftentimes 
all that's on your mind is making sure that you reach that point. And I think especially for women, um, there's a certain level of pressure that's often put on us where if we don't reach that point, something's wrong with us. Or, you know, we're going to lie about it because it's like, damn, like he's not going to stop until I either fake this or like, like s contract so hard to try to get a specific result. Um, and I think that that's something that women deal with across the board. I think it's definitely starting to become a bigger part of the conversation. Um, and really what I've found is when using cannabis very intentionally, it's much more about the, the discovery and the journey. Um, you know, I often think about it when I used to do a lot of research, um, is sort of a, the masculine versus feminine, um, way of looking at it where typical, very penetrative masculine sex is about the arousal state coming on and then a very significant increase um, in what you're feeling until you reach that point of climax and then there's a sharp descent. And in, sleep. And sleep, you know, you wanna roll over and eat a sandwich or something. <laughs> um, versus being able to come into the experience, especially for women, of recognizing that our state of arousal shifts and changes while we're in an experience with someone. So you're, you're much more looking at it about the peaks and valleys of what you can experience with your partner. And, you know, when used with intention and in the right quantity, I think that the combination of, of really switching from that singular focus to a much more uh, discovery process with your partner um, just really amplifies the intimacy to it no longer being about um, we weren't successful if this thing didn't happen um, to really just recognizing like, wow, there was this moment that I felt this specific thing with you. And the intimacy that's created from that, that depth of knowing yourself and being able to really fine tune uh, the sensations that you're feeling in your body within you and then what you can experience with your partner in that when you're letting go of just driving towards this, this one thing to be. Yeah. So you've opened your, thing. you've opened your mind, you've opened your body and it yeah. really does. It changes everything. And it's less about this one specific action item that we have in the bedroom to being something that's like, hey, we start in the living room and we smoke a bowl. I think layering is such a great thing too with cannabis and, and sexuality. It's, you know, have that something that's going to have that immediate onset. You're going to, you know, vape or use a sublingual or, you know, smoke a joint. And another important tip too is say you are a cannabis newbie and you're dating somebody who smokes all the time, get a CBD joint. Garden Society is coming out with a line of CBD joints. It will relax you mentally. It will relax you physically, but you won't be too high. And your partner can be high, and you can be smoking a joint together, and you can share that experience, but you, you, won't, be out of your you won't be out of your mind. So that's one way to to do it to where it's like, okay, we, we have this one experience and then maybe you have dinner, you have an edible, whatever. And so it becomes more of a play session instead of just a, an agenda. That item. is an awesome Mary Jane tip. I am digging it. Yay. <laughs> well, if I can only have one, I guess that's it. So um, the last thing I think I want to touch on is this experience of true connection you know, versus that performance-based mentality. So you, you've you talked us through kind of like how that all works. And then if you are in a situation with your partner and and they're doing that and you feel that, because, I mean, you can tell if somebody's checked in or checked out or whatever, how do you, how do you reel them back into the moment without ruining the moment? Slow down. <laughs> more than anything and I, I mean I think it can happen regardless of the relationship construct that you're in um, because sometimes it's fun to be in that performative like look at how hot I feel and you can be in that mentality and I think getting your partner to slow down 
in whatever way in that moment feels good for you, whether it's verbally asking for it, um, whether it's really physically trying to slow down or switching how, you know, switching the, the who's on top and who's on bottom and how you're playing with each other, but really um, slowing down. And I think that that just the recognition of it in your mind when you realize that you're having that and you're not really feeling connected or not having the experience that you're looking for um, is the number one thing. I think, you know, and I know we're talking a lot about women, but for women, women really want more sex than men. Like yeah. we really do. It's just not the sex that's on the menu. It's not, it's not always that. And so I think it's really important to be able to slow down. Like we're always running so fast trying to get to the next thing. And like, this is the juiciness to like, just revel in and be inside of. And, um, that would be my number one thing for switching okay. that. I appreciate that. So, Okay, we are, you know, we're kind of wrapping up uh, the things that we particularly wanted to talk about. Does anyone have any questions that they want to ask? Um, or is there something particular um, that, let's see if any of these are... Some of your questions are hilarious. How can cannabis, food, and beverage inspire a mood and any recipes or ideas for seducing your lovers in good ways? You know... So there's cannabis infused honey. I don't know if you have, you've seen any, I think I'm sure there's some out here in harvest, which by the way, at the end of the evening, um, Tolly and me and the bud tenders out there, if we've inspired you to want to buy something, we'll do some personal shopping with you. We'll help you find exactly what you're looking for. So don't be afraid to grab us at the end and, um, and ask, but but I think this cannabis infused honey that is out on the market right now is a, a delicious way to seduce your lover. Um, you, yes, CBD, THC, but infused honey is lovely. There are some amazing chocolates, Garden Society. They've got beautiful chocolates. Those are those are always a fun addition. But I really think that the this mocktail situation too, where we're just eliminating alcohol out of out of the whole mix. Like alcohol is so last year, people. <laughs> I know. I think I'm finally ready for one of the infused margaritas. It sounds pretty yummy. Yeah. Um, any recipes? Well. We'll give you the products. You come up with your own special recipe. What types of cannabis will give me more confidence in the bedroom? Well, it's not going to be a type of cannabis that's going to give you confidence in the bedroom. It's going to be your, your knowledge and proficiency with the plant. And once you know how to use the plant you really need to spend some time utilizing it in meditation. Like being, being with yourself. Like why are you not confident? Ask the question and then get still and breathe and listen to what your higher self tells you. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me come out. It feels really lovely to be here and... Are there any burners in the crowd before we wrap up? Yes, this is a smoking establishment. Feel free. Do you have any? Do you? Oh, okay. And if you haven't gotten a gift bag, be sure and grab it. But yeah, thank you all so much for being a part of my very first Love Mary Jane Live podcast. And I hope that you will subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and also check out Casually Baked, the podcast. And I'm also excited to announce that I will also be producing a podcast um, this year with um, Carly and Aaron, the co-founders of Garden Society. So we are going to be creating some great programming that is specifically for women and who are kind of in that entrepreneurial journey and are 
moms and, and breadwinners and doers and movers and shakers and all of the things. So um, we will have three shows coming from Casually Baked Studios, and we will be doing some things here more often in this new year. So I hope that you will stick with me and uh, join me again. Thanks for coming. The Love Mary Jane column and podcast are created and produced by yours truly. Feedback feeds the flame of Mary Jane, so submit your cannabis-related relationship questions or sticky situations at lovemaryjane.net. Thanks to my highly capable sound engineer, Arnav Gupta, and to my highly talented friend, Seth Walker, for the show vibes. You can find the Love MJ theme music, All That I'm Asking, on Seth's album, Sky Still Blue, however you listen to music these days. I hope you'll join me next week for more. Love, Mary Jane.